better way of finding out what Jesus looked like. This is one of Israel's leading departments of forensic science. These boxes are full of hundreds of human skulls and bones that were uncovered accidentally by archaeologists, by road builders, by all sorts of people here in the Holy Land. They'll be reburied once the experts have finished studying them. But until then, what's in these boxes can tell us a story that should get us closer to the face of Jesus. Josias has found that the face in the icons corresponds to a type of skull not found in Israel. The face of Jesus would have been closer to these Jewish skulls. They were found in Jerusalem and they date to the first century. If we look at the skulls here, these things, rather than being long-headed, which many of the skulls are, these things are very, very wide here in terms of the parietals and they narrow over here. Sometimes these things are all even almost round. Now, if we compare these types with other Eastern Mediterranean non-Jewish types, and if you look at this, notice how this is very long and this is very, very narrow. It's a complete, complete different type. If we put particularly these next to each other, perhaps you can see clearly what I'm talking about. Again, we see how, how wide the one on my left hand is compared to this one over here on the right. This is much more gracile, much more fine, as compared to this one here. This one's much more robust, just in, even in terms of weight. Let me feel. Racial differences, feel. okay? It's tremendous. I'm trying to drop them. Oh yeah, this is much heavier. Much heavier, much more robust, much, much stronger vault. We used the first century skull to get even closer to the face of the Jesus of history. Okay, at least, at least they got the color brown color brown and not olive-ish, greenish, <laughs> or, or, or pale face color clay. So let's keep going. At least they, at least they got brown. At least they got brown. Richard Nee from the unit of art in medicine at the University of Manchester is one of the world's leading forensic artists. He's put faces on modern skulls for the police many times. The basic face, the basic shape, the general configuration of the face is determined by the skull and the face that will emerge from this reconstruction will be broadly similar to the kind of face that this man had when he was alive. This certainly doesn't look anything like the images that one associates with him, and I think it's much more likely to be a, an accurate reflection of the majority of people who would have been around at that time. It's very much the kind of face that you see in parts of the world today, in uh, parts of North Africa and Egypt and around into uh, parts of Jordan and Israel. Family, please do not be deceived by the deceiver. Esau is the greatest deceiver. He will bite you if you are not paying attention. Do not be deceived by this. This is not what Yahweh I look like at all. This is not even what his people look like. This this man look. Yeah, I'm gonna just hold my comments. But this ain't what Yahweh I look like. The face looks old before its time. with an archaeological reconstruction, that is a fair thing to do for somebody who you know has probably been living in fairly... Now hold on, I'm not tripping right. 
look at them features. That look like a old Edomite, a old skinhead Edomite, a old man, an old white man. I know I'm not tripping. That definitely don't look like no brother. <laughs> Hot um, climate with, with lots of bright sunshine, which does tend to make the brows become more furrowed and the skin more creased and wrinkled. But this face still leaves many questions unanswered. What kind of hair, beard, and skin color did Jesus have? He had woolly hair, duh, woolly. Say woolly, woolly hair, kinky woolly hair. And he was so-called black, dark skin, very dark skin. It was time for a makeover. First, the reconstructed face was scanned into a computer. The biblical scholar, Dr. Mark Goodacre, has discovered a number of historical clues which get us even closer to the lightly face of Jesus. Look at these telling images from a Jewish synagogue in Syria. They were painted in the third century, less than 200 years from the time of Jesus. They're the earliest pictures of Jewish people in the world, and fashions back then changed slowly. The kind of hairstyle that you get, it's short, it's curly, it's, if you like, afro in style. Short, it's curly, it's, if you like, afro in style. And this seems to be almost uniform in the way that Jews are depicted there. Moreover, it's likely that Jesus would have had a short cropped, kind of black sort of beard. Something a little bit uh, like this. they liked short hair is confirmed by St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, composed barely 20 years after the time of Jesus. He writes that it's disgraceful for a man to have long hair. Now what's interesting about this is that St. Paul knew members of the family of Jesus, he knew the disciples of Jesus. It's unlikely that Paul would have been able to say something like this if it was well known that Jesus himself had long hair. And Jesus lived in a part of the world where people have dark skin. It's unlikely that Jesus' skin tones were um, white. It's unlikely that Jesus' skin tones were um, white. In the traditional, as, as you get it in much of the traditional arts, as you get it in the Hollywood Jesuses, it's more likely had darker skin tones and is much more likely to have looked something like this. Of course, this is not the actual face of Jesus, but it takes us beyond the idealized images of the last 1500 years and closer than ever before to what Jesus looked like. Oh, hell no! There is no doubt that a real flesh and blood man called Jesus of Nazareth challenged the Jewish establishment. First of all, if we could just be completely honest without and put all the BS aside and stop assuming like we don't know what Yahweh Shai, who the world originally calls Jesus Christ, like we don't know what he looked like. We know what he looked like. Y'all just try, you know, the heathen is just trying to deceive the masses into believing, well, we don't know what he really looked like. He was Middle Eastern. Well, what the hell does Middle Eastern look like? And where is Middle Eastern located? Isn't that in Africa? right right and before colonization everybody over in so-called africa because that's not the original name either was black so-called black a dark complexion a dark complexion not olivish what is the olivish can somebody please please explain that to me because at the end of the day last time i checked there's two olives one's green and then there's one that's black. 
and we know there's no green person walking around on this earth okay if there's green if they're if they are green it's something wrong baby if they're yellow it's probably a jaundice problem there's something wrong okay so technically we know there shouldn't even be a dispute as to what christ looked like it's made plain in the scriptures now christianity wants to take the word of god which was not given unto them it was given to his children it was given to the israelites right our history book and if it's our history book when we look like our forefathers and our foremothers when Yahweh shy when we look like him the most high when we look similar to him none of our people was white okay or greenish or olivish or middle eastern no we had dark complexions dark complexions we were dark we were dark that's why it was such an odd and strange thing when esau came out red and hairy all over like a hairy garment that was strange that wasn't the norm that's why there was a description in the scriptures what he looked like because he didn't look like everybody else people was kind of looking at him a little strange like oh hold on hold on he don't look like us he don't look like us that's because Esau, there was a mark put on him. Go back to Genesis, the fourth chapter, and read it. When Cain slew Abel, the Most High put that mark on him. That mark was leprosy, okay? So the Israelites was always a dark-skinned people. But through colonization, slavery, the mixing started. So the complexion did begin to change. But at the end of the day... Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he was a dark-skinned black man from the tribe of Judah, okay? With a Hebrew name, with woolly hair, strong masculine man, with nothing soft about him, okay? So y'all can quit lying and trying to take my savior and turn him into this effeminate, blonde head, blue eye, skelly face, unmelanated devil. Stop with the lies. We're not going for the lies no more. Stop lying. This man don't look nothing like how Yahweh Shai look at all. At all. Y'all just winging it. it. You're so desperate. You're winging it. You're winging it. How in the world was Moses able to blend in with the Egyptians? Come on, make it make sense. Can we please add it up? Can we please add it up? The lies have to stop. It's very simple. The description of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. It's in the Bible. So let's get it. This is Revelations 1, 14 through 15. In his head, in his hairs, were white like wool. The color of his hair was white, okay? Wool, woolly texture, is like a sheep. What people on this earth have woolly texture hair? so-called black people okay that's plain his eyes were a flame of fire so his eyes was red and his feet like unto fine brass what's brass brass is like a penny okay well if you take that penny and you put it in a furnace what color does it turn it turns black but let's keep going and his feet was like unto fine brass as if it had burned in a furnace in his voice the sound of many waters he had a loud strong voice very masculine not effeminate like we see today y'all probably have a problem with that too y'all want to change his voice the, the the sound of his voice so like the issue comes in when christians try to take a history book that belonged to the israelites okay and turn it into something that's theirs that's called whitewashing that's called stealing that's called vagabondish behavior fug fugitive behavior okay this is why they changed the image of christ and turned him into a so-called white man blonde hair blue eyes why to look like them because they know they know what so-called jesus really looked like they know he's a black man they know he's a black man but that's why christianity is a lie because it was based off a lie it's a made up man-made doctrine it is a religion and According to the scriptures, that would be idolatry for the children of Israel, 
okay? We're not into religion. This is our history. This is our lineage. This is our custom. This is our way of living. We're, we're not making these things up. This is not a religion for us. This is a bloodline, okay? You can't make that up. You can't replace what Yahweh Shai truly looks like. You can't do it. And that's why y'all get so mad when we point out the fact that he indeed was not a blind head, blue white Edomite, a pale face, but he was indeed a so-called black man, strong, masculine black man with woolly hair. That really bothers y'all because y'all hate truth. That's why you did as much as you could do to deceive the masses and the masses that you want to deceive is the children of Israel. But that's the truth. So-called Jesus, his name is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, he is a so-called dark-skinned black man. And a lot of y'all going to have issues with that, which indeed proves that's why a lot of y'all not going to be saved. He's coming back to save his people from their sins. Why did it say his people? Because he has kindred on this earth. And y'all lied and changed his image and changed his name and changed his color so that his kindred wouldn't know who he was or that they were related to him. But the truth is the truth. He's coming back to save his people. Yes, it's important what color he is. Yes, it's important what his true name is. Absolutely. Because he's coming back for, for people like him, his kindred. He's coming back for his people. So, of course, if you don't know you his kindred, then you don't. You don't know he's coming back to save you. We got to wake up, people. But for the Israelites, we got to return back to the Most High. Keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Shalom.